Hey, Blake. Long time no see. How's it going? Never better. Since a certain little border has moved out of my life, I'm feeling fabulous. Uh, uh, excuse me, I didn't know you were busy. I'll be back. No, no, no. I'm glad to see you. I want to talk to you. But, uh, I've got an appointment with the city editor. It won't take long. Stay. I'll be back in a few minutes. Keep your motor running. You'll excuse me, won't you? I have one. Why couldn't you have stayed out of my parents' life? Dandy! Why, I was just reading about you. Well, as far as I'm concerned, the story is really not finished yet. It's good to see you. Uh, Roger, my personal life has been splattered all over the tabloids, and I'd really like the truth. The truth about what? What's about that? who stole the money from Fifth Street. About who I went to jail for and who you're protecting. For the, uh, for the phone call. Thanks. Hey. You want to tell me what the hell you're doing here? I thought I told you to stay home. Are you even sober enough to drive, Bridget? I'm fine. I would never put Peter in danger like that. Matt, I came because right after you left, a phone call came in. It was from home. I don't even want to talk about that, Bridget. Well, it's tough. You can't run away from dad forever. and I were just talking, and I realized that I, I didn't have a will. That's all, and I, I, th I think I didn't need one. I have a couple of things, certainly nothing great, but a couple of things that I'd like to give away to people, no, especially to don't. you and Michelle. I, I've... I've got plenty of time to talk about this later, huh? Oh, honey, I know. I just mean... If you want a will, I'm sure that Ross can draw something up for yes. you. Yes. It's just... The point is we shouldn't even be talking about this now. The only thing that we should be talking about is getting you better. Um, I'm going to give you guys some privacy. Yeah. Eve, papers you want. Thanks. Death with dignity. You guys have been doing a lot of talking together, haven't you? Don't be mad at Rick. I just... I didn't want to worry you because I thought you might think I'd given up hope, but I haven't, not at all. I've seen these things all my life. I just never thought that you wouldn't. Look, you and I have to talk about this, all right? I need to do this. I need to draw up a living will. I just want to make certain that that there are clear instructions on how my life is to be handled if on that remote possibility that I could end up in a coma or on a life support system. Sweetheart, come here. Come here. I'm not going to. But I have to do this as terrifying as it is. 
And you have to help me with it. Okay? I'll do whatever you want. He's our father. I realize he's no prize, but you owe him at least a return. I don't owe him anything, Bridget. Look, you talked to him, you told him I was fine, that you're fine, I think that's enough. No, that's not enough. Bridget, the old man was never there for us when we were kids. I don't see why any of that should change now. You're not going to return his phone call? What are you going to tell me next, Matt? That, that, that you're not going to invite him and Mom to the wedding? Look, Mom's invited to the wedding, but I don't want the old man there. What? It's a special day for me and Vanessa. I want to be happy. Why the hell would I want him there? To ruin it? I don't think so. I don't get it. I, just tell me, all right? Just tell me. Whatever it is, tell me. What want, is it with you and Dad? I don't Dad? want to talk about it, okay? Tell me. Look, Bridget. Hi. If it isn't the handsome fiancé himself. Tiffany Astor, the society editor for the journal. Uh, do I know you? Oh, we've met, en passant, at some function or other. I can't remember which. Oh. I love a man of few words. Uh, are you here for a reason, Ms. Astor? Well, Vanessa has very graciously granted me an interview. I want to know all about the up-and-coming nuptials. But what luck to have you here, too. Now I can get both your inputs. Vanessa granted what? Oh, there you are. Hello. I, I don't recall having made an appointment with you. Well, you didn't personally, no. But a rather caustic young woman answered my call and assured me it would be okay. Oh, sorry, Mother, I forgot to mention it. Excuse me, I'm just going to go have a cigarette. Dinah. Okay, here we go. We're, we're getting out of here. Thank you for this morning. I'm sorry about the mess. Oh, sure, everything. it's fine. Bye. 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 Uh, thanks for covering for me, and uh, keep in mind what I said, all right? Bye. Love you. Well, I'm, I'm going to get going, too. I'm running behind schedule this morning, I, so... You don't have any place you have to be, do you? Yeah, actually, I have to get out to a construction site, so. Oh, well, surely that can wait a few minutes. I won't keep you long, I promise. It's just so serendipitous to have the two of you together. And my readers are dying to learn about the man Vanessa Chamberlain Lewis has chosen to marry. But I have to warn you, I'll be asking some very personal questions. <clears throat> Do we have to do this? Absolutely. I mean, either tell her what to say or she's going to make things up. Which do you want? Why don't we tell her to mind her own business? Is that an option? No, it's not. Come All on. right, I'll try to be polite. Okay. You're angry with me. Hey, that's cool. It's all right. You can uh, even call me a house wrecker. It's okay. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. I understand, Blake. I really do. You love both your parents. You want to be loyal to them. You want them both to be happy. I hope Ben's as loyal as you are when he grows up. Oh, please, don't compare me to your 15-year-old son, all right? This is more than loyalty here. This is about a love and a passion that my parents share, but they have never been able to fulfill. It's something that goes so deep that it defines them. It makes them who they are. Now, Fletcher, you're never going to get that. You're never going to understand what that is because you could never give my mother the kind of love that she has with my father. As far as I'm concerned, you're just an opportunist. You saw an opening, you stepped in, you tried to take over. And now you think you're the big winner, right? <laughs> I've got a scoop for you, Fletcher Reed. It ain't going to last, and you can quote me. Oh, you're right about one thing, Blake. Roger and Holly shared a love with a capital L. And it was passionate, no doubt. But it was very harmful to your mother. See, that's why it didn't work out between them. Not because of me. I give your mother something completely different, something far better. I give her something she can trust. Oh, please. Oh, come on, Blake. You haven't been around lately enough to see the change in your mother. She actually laughs now. Well, just you amuse her. She's been through a tough time. You just happen to be around. That's all there is to it. I'm not really concerned whether you believe me or not. I'm simply telling you the truth. That's all. So you're saying that everything's just peachy? It's lovey-dovey, happily ever after? <laughs> no. We fight. But the 
things we fight about have nothing to do with dominance and control. See, Holly and I are... We're passionate about life in a very basic sense. Yeah, we, we argue, we fight, but we fight as equals. I respect her. But more than anything, I love your mother very much. And I'm not talking about my behavior the other night, you know, the, the crazy screaming from the rooftops, grand opera kind of love. And my love is deeper than that. It's cleaner, it's simpler, it's truer. It's all about living and breathing and, and, and sharing. Now, I, I don't expect you to be crazy about me, and you don't even have to like me if you don't want to, but what I would like you to do is to give us a chance. Would you do that, Blake? Would you give your mother and me a chance? Okay, Matt, let's start with you. Tell me all about your family. Now, my inquiring readers are dying to know who you are. <clears throat> well, I'm a, I'm a Reardon. My sister Bridget owns the, and runs the boarding house here in town. As far as my life story goes, that's, that's about it. Oh, now, we do know some facts, Matt. You're from Flint, Michigan, is that correct? I uh, used to be, yeah. Well, your family is still back there? Some. Your father? Yes. And what does he do? What's his profession? Oh. Good question. A uh, little of this, a little of that. Oh, jack of all trades, huh? Yeah, you might say that. And what about you? What are your career goals? My goals actually are to get this interview over as quick as possible. I've got a construction site that I've got to get out to. I don't mean to be rude, Ms. Aston, but uh, maybe you could just tell your readers that um, Springfield is my home now, and I'm about to be married to a very wonderful, special woman. Well, when is the glorious day? Soon. <laughs> is that what I'm to write, Vanessa? Well, I don't know. We really haven't decided yet. Well, where will you be living? That's undecided as well. I guess, uh... I guess we haven't had much time to talk about it all. No, we haven't. Well, surely there's something you can tell me. What about your future? Any bambini in your plans? You know, I think we ought to cut this interview short and put it on the shelf for a while, okay? Oh, well, I, I just hate to leave the page blank. I mean, surely there is something I can write about you. Well, uh, we'll, we'll contact you as soon as we know a little more. Um, we're in love. Write that. <laughs> oh. Nice work. <laughs> How'd it go? Well, you'd almost think they didn't want publicity. Why? What's the problem? Well, the problem is your future stepfather's a clam. Gorgeous, but a clam. He won't tell me a thing about himself, and I have to come up with something. Well, I know he's from Flint. Wonderful. All right, Matt Reardon, Flint. That just about tells it all, doesn't it? My readers will yell bloody murder thinking I'm hiding something. Dinah? Cancel Vanessa's appointments for the rest of the afternoon. <clears throat> oh, really? Cancel? Yeah, we're going out. Well, what should I tell her appointments? Well, I don't know. You're usually pretty creative. Why don't you figure something out? Oh, look, there are no appointments. So, if your highness doesn't mind, this peon's gonna go to lunch. See ya. Honey, sorry I had to rush out. I am surprised to see you. I owe you an apology, too, Blake. For what? Well, I, I came down on you kind of hard just a couple of minutes ago, and it, it's not that I even want to criticize your dad even a little bit. It's just that I really feel that you need to know where I stand. I know, I'm enlightened. Okay, excuse me. Ooh, got something on your mind, say it. Is it true? Do you love him? I mean, is he better to you than Dad was, or is he just different? I don't know. I don't... What is it? I don't 
think you have to ask me all those questions. I think you already know the answer. All I will say is that, honey, I am happy. <laughs> Happiness. Yes, and I don't want to analyze it or question it or doubt it. Uh, it's not real love, Mom. No, uh-uh. That is, um... It's a temporary feeling because you're disappointed by Dad one more time. No, honey. Yes! Fletcher tells you a joke. You laugh. You think that's love. It is. Nick, where's Tangie? Is she coming into work? She's on the case, Chief. I thought she'd be here first thing in the morning with a jailhouse scoop about the Fifth Street theft. Uh, well, like I said... You know, I spent 30 the... bucks on the software for that welcome home sign. She better have a damn good reason for not showing up. She does. And Cutter's in big trouble, you know, for jailing her. Hey, boss, will you let me get this a word This is a in? big story. This is huge. And Tangie's on it, Fletch. Even as I'm sitting here talking to myself. I'm sorry for the interruption. Okay, now about the thief. Why is his identity so important to you? Not her. What? You said his identity. Oh, Tangie. I mean, most people use the masculine when speaking generally. I wouldn't read too much into it. Please don't treat me this way. Look, all I'm saying is the money has been returned to the good people of Fifth Street. You're out of jail and not to be too glib about it, but no harm, no foul, don't you think? You, uh... You have been using me. And I thought you were my friend. I am your friend, and I would never use you. You used me to return the money to the police. I protected you as my source, and I end up in jail. I am very sorry for any trouble that you were caused, and I have nothing but gratitude for your protecting me, your source, but if you're out of jail now, I think we can get on with our lives. No. No, not until we put all of this together. Put what together? You're the one who got me out of jail, right? You, you sent me that woman with a, with a message to talk to Ross Marler, which I did. I followed your instructions to the T. I talked to Russ. Ross, I, I revealed you as my source. And then what happens? My entire personal life gets thrown all over the tabloids. Patrick Cutter has spurned me, and he jailed me out of spite. But that's true, isn't it? It was embarrassing. And it was really painful, Roger. Patrick is my friend. And I don't know if that's a friendship that's going to continue. Well, if he chooses not to continue it, he's a fool. Roger, You're well out of it. Roger, did you orchestrate this whole thing? Are people really right about you? That you enjoy these, these sort of evil machinations or is this some sort of complicated way to hide the person who really stole the money from fifth street because you know who did it and you owe me the truth you're right i owe you the truth and i'm going to give it to you i'll tell you who stole the money i will tell you everything i know about this person Continue with part two of Guiding Light in a moment. So who stole the money, Roger? Right here. What's right here? In that photograph. The thief is right here. His name is Victor Pachinov, formerly a double agent for Moscow. Now he's wanted for murder in Brussels. He's one of the most despicable creatures I've ever had to do business with. Victor... Pachinov. He's on the run from several of his former employers. What was he doing in Springfield? Oh, it's just chance. And he happened on the Fifth Street ball, and saw his opportunity and stole the money. I mean, it was taking candy from a baby for him. There's no security at all. And he just stashed it under a manhole cover. Figuring he'd get it the next day, but the people he crossed found out where he was and he had to take off before he could retrieve the money. I think I saw him at the ball, but... You're protecting him. 
Why? He did me a favor once. A favor? I mean, he's long gone from Springfield. I went to jail, Roger. The police can call Interpol. Patrick was humiliated. And tell them what he's Roger been up to. Roger Buzz was falsely accused. All because you owed a killer a favor? I guess so. Upset about something? No, I'm just, I'm just kind of mad at myself. Why? I thought you handled that Tiffany acid just absolutely beautifully. I just think it's so weird. I mean, what? We don't even know this lady. Why does she need to know my business and your business? I mean, what, what, what do they get out of that? Don't I don't worry about it. Okay, they're always going to be Tiffany Astors in the world. They're always going to ask really obnoxious questions. You and I don't have to answer to anybody. Ourselves. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe that's maybe that's what's got me so bugged about this whole thing. What? What do you mean? That's so we couldn't answer her questions even if we wanted to. Oh yes, we could. We can't. I mean, doesn't it bother you that there's things about each other that we don't know, like like what we want out of life, where we're headed, what what we want out of the next two years. 10 years, 20 years? I don't know. I guess that's what being young lets you do. You know, as far as I'm concerned, it's hard enough to plan tomorrow. Not to mention two years from now. I'm not talking about plan plans. I'm talking about what's in here. What's in our souls. Hey, Matt, how you doing? Hey, where's that sister of yours? Went to the boarding house to try to find her. She's not there. Uh, uh, do you know Vanessa Skunk? No, I don't think we do. Um, you're Bridget's friend? Uh, yeah. Oh, oh this is this your old lady, huh? I mean, squeeze. <laughs> you, you know what I mean, right? Sorry. Uh, Vanessa, this is, uh, Kirk, or Skunk, whatever you want to call it. I, how do you do? Good, good. Hey. I can totally see now why you're willing to get hitched up. Will you excuse us for a minute? Mm -hmm. Hey, what's up? It's, uh, it's about Bridget. I mean, the reason she didn't, uh, didn't answer the door is because she's, uh, she's kind of out of it. She's dead to the world. And after the late hour that you got her in last night, I think she'll probably be out of it all day. It's not like anybody forced her to go out partying, you know? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm not blaming you, Skunk. I just, you know, I just think maybe the next time you take her out, it'd be a good idea if you get her in a decent hour, you know what I mean? Sure. Uh, Matt, it's not like she's a child or anything. She's a woman. Look, you know, you're not getting it, Skunk. She's got responsibilities, okay? Well, I think she's handling the boarding house just great, don't you? I mean, just relax. I mean, give her a break. Hey, Maggie. How you doing? Hey. See you. Is that guy Bridget's boyfriend? I guess. Hey. Hi. You okay, how are you? Not bad. Not bad. Good. Okay. So what do you say we talk about this later? I mean, we don't have to make this decision now. One thing's for sure. I just, um... I just want to make certain that if it gets to the point where I'm not capable of making decisions for myself, I want you to understand what this is all about. I don't want to be on life support. No respirator, no machines at all, okay? That's all. I understand. You promised me. 
Now that I not promise you anything. I have not yet begun to fight. <laughs> Who was it that said that? John Paul Jones? I don't know, some more on a boat. <laughs> won a lot of battles. So well, you? I'm going to win this one. We have a visitor. Cynthia! Oh, my gosh. What a recovery. Oh, and I feel like I've been out of the loop. Any chance of me visiting a while and you catching me up on things? Absolutely. Yeah. I think that means we get lost. Okay. I don't understand. What do you think you're doing? Well, patients need hope. They need to believe that they're going to get better. I mean, faith in that conviction is more important than any damn medicine yeah, that you can I, give them. I agree. I agree. Well, then why are you encouraging Eve to believe that she's going to die? Dad, I'm not encouraging it. And Eve hasn't given up hope. She's a very determined and incredibly courageous woman, but she is a realist. Look, I don't need you to tell me who Eve She's is and who she in this isn't. area, Dad. She was among the first to isolate this blood disease, Dad. She knows the odds of beating it. She is going to beat You're it. You're right, Dad. If anybody can beat it, Eve can. Dad, the, the odds are long. Are you bringing her all this stuff, these brochures? She asked me for it, Dad. What was I supposed to do, not give it to her? To pretend that Eve might not die isn't being positive, Dad. It's being blind. You have a living will. Uh, only about a mile long. There are a million things I won't let him do to me. And I add a couple every day. <laughs> Honey, when it's my time to go, it's going to be one big adventure. And I want both my eyes wide open. What do you mean, a big adventure? Oh, <laughs> if you've got the time, I've got lots of kinds of theories about the hereafter. One of them is from Groucho Marx. Maggie, do me a favor, okay? As long as it isn't cash. I am hawked into next week. Well, no, no, no. It's about no. Peter. Um, David's watching him. Would you just kind of run up and, you know, keep an eye on them and everything? Yeah, sure. Thanks, your doll. You're welcome. No problem. Come on, Scott. Take me out of here. Mm, of course. What's so funny? Oh, if I wasn't so angry at you, I'd hug you. Oh, so that was an angry laugh you just burst into for no reason. I'm laughing because you're blaming the theft on Victor was a master stroke. In fact, it was so brilliant that I could kiss you to death. Don't. You are so mean. Oh, so that's why you're angry with me? No, it runs much deeper than that. Listen, you should be nothing but grateful to me. I got you out of a pretty tight spot, miss. Yes, you did, but did you have to tell my father about it? I mean, thanks to you, he found out I took the money, and now I have to do penance by working like a slave in my mother's office. Maybe you'd prefer two to five in the state pen for grand larceny. I could have given Tangie your name, you know. No, you wouldn't rat me out. It's not your style. You sure about that? Mm-hmm. You like it when people are beholden to you. And I am beholden to you. This is the second jam I've got you out of. Okay, so I'm doubly beholden to you. And I'd love to give you a reward, but you won't let me close enough to kiss you. Come on, Roger. Stop being so prickly. I Listen up. I don't appreciate you dropping in here unannounced. Oh, don't worry. Tangie didn't see me. Luckily for you. Now, why are you here? See, at first, I thought that Working as a wage slave in my mummy's office was one of Dante's rings of hell, but now I'm starting to have second thoughts. After all, it is the family business. Get to the point. Anyway, all sorts of interesting things happen. Over at Lewis, I'm learning all about my family and my family-to-be. <laughs> so along those lines, I was hoping maybe you could give me some helpful hints. What did you have in mind? Well, for starters, how would I go about searching into someone's background? Start at the beginning. Where does this person come from? A town called Flint.
said you wanted to see me. Well, I called the station house and you weren't there and I asked Levy about you and he was really vague. What's going on? Are you going away? Yeah, well, your wrongful arrest caused a great deal of publicity, which was no surprise. What was a surprise, though, was, uh, well, I was given an offer, and I couldn't refuse. An offer? Yeah, the chief said, uh, choice between suspension or vacation. Oh, oh, Patrick. Well, obviously, I took the latter. Anyway, I always wanted to visit some Civil War battlefields. This will be my chance to see Antietam. You're going to come back soon, right? <laughs> I have nowhere else to call home. Yeah, I'll be back. I, um... I have this for you. It's, uh... Probably who stole the money from the Fifth Street Ball. Another tip from your source? It's a photo of the ball and a more likely suspect than Buzz Cooper. Oh, great timing. Maybe they'll solve the case before it's too late. I guess it's too late for us, though. Huh? Our friendship after all that's happened. could read you. <laughs> no. No, thank you very much. No message. She's not there either. Well, where the hell is she? Look, wherever she is, I'm sure she's working on the case. And I'm also sure she's going to come walking in here with a great story, okay? okay all right. I'm not worried about it. You shouldn't oh, be good. worried about it either. I'm but sorry. Look, if I'm going to spend ask... all day making phone calls all around the world... Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't make Listen, any more phone calls. Just what? what? You. What's wrong? Come with me. What's going on? I want to talk to you in private. Well, if it's about the software, 30 bucks for this, uh, blame it on Nick. Take it out of his check. It's not about your software, darling. It's about what an incredible man I think you are. I know it must have been difficult talking to Blake. And I'm sure she said some hurtful things to you, but that's only because she is hoping for something that cannot happen. I'm glad to hear you say that. You know what? I almost feel sorry for her. You know, maybe in time she'll come around. Mm -hmm. I heard part of what you said. Yeah, which part? I heard you say you love me. Well, that's not news. I mean, I love you. I say that all the time. I love you. What about me? Do I say it enough? Because it's true, you know. I do love you. There she is, my darling daughter. Okay, what's going on? Is it Ross again? Ross is wonderful. Everything is fabulous at the house. He sure straightened Dinah out. Threw her out. Made her take a job with Vanessa. Well, that's good news, isn't it? So? Is it true, Dad? What? Have you given up on Mom? Are you really finished with her? I love you so much, honey. Thank you for fighting for me, but I gotta stop living in a dream world. So it's true then? It is over? Look at my desk, what do you see? I don't need to, Dad. I noticed when I walked in here, the photo of Mom you always keep on your desk, it's gone. I've given up hoping for miracles, sweetie. Especially that particular miracle. Then I'm sorry for you. I'm very sorry.
ever give me that thing? Am I smoking a 98.6? Exactly. See? I'm improving. You can't improve on perfection. <laughs> You're not still mad at me for doing my research, are you? What good would my being mad do? It's not gonna stop you from doing anything. I've never been able to stop you from doing anything ever. I don't even want to anymore. Just please save your strength. Five years from now? Yes. Okay. Well, let's see. Uh, Peter will be in school building college. Well, and I hope Dinah will be settled down a little bit. You just mentioned everyone but yourself. Yeah. So? So where are you going to be? What are you talking about? They're my children, you know? They're part of me. They're part of my life. They're part of my dreams. They're part of my future. It's different for you. You don't have the same kind of commitment. Well, I think I've got a very big commitment. I'm committed to you and, and figuring out where we both fit into the same picture together. How can two people be married and not talk about these things? Yeah, well, we're not married yet. I'm not very good at this. You know, when I was a kid, my old man took me hunting once. And he said you could tell if an animal was scared by looking into his eyes. I see that look in you right now. You're scared to talk about our future. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. You're petrified like a cornered doe. Do not compare me to some animal, okay? A uh, Flint Gazette? Hello, this is Tiffany Astor of the Springfield Journal. I was hoping you could help me out. Uh, I'm doing research on a future article about a former Flint resident, and uh, I believe he still has family there. I'd appreciate any information you could give me, especially about the father. Yes! Oh, great. Uh, it's spelled R-E-A-R-D-O-N. Introducing Guiding Light's Viewer Feedback Line. Tell us what you think. 1-900-288-7575. A dollar fifty per minute. This has been Guiding Light. Jewelry provided by Clara Studio for Asymmetry.